Honey, are you still at home? I have some really exciting news to tell you. What is it, hon? I'm still preparing our dinner. It's lasagna, your all-time favorite dish, made with my special recipe. Once you've got a taste of it, you'll never be able to forget about it. Well, about that, I think maybe I have to skip this one. My boss said he wanted to have a hearty dinner between the three of us. It'd be a great chance to mention about the job promotion that I've always been longing for, don't you think? That sounds great, my dear. We definitely can't miss this once-of-a-lifetime opportunity. But how come he knew about me and wanted to see me? Did you tell your boss about me? Well, I kind of did. You know, bosses always want to get to know more about their subordinates' personal background. I think it's pretty common sense. Anyways, he asked me about you and I just showed him some pictures of you. That's all. And guess what? From what I saw in his eyes, I can tell without a doubt that he's really into you. What? That doesn't sound right. How can your boss be into me? To be honest, that creeps me out a little bit. What's wrong about that, darling? He just happened to be well disposed towards you and appreciates your beauty. That's all there is to it. He also praised how well proportioned your body is. He even said that your skin and your hair are perfect. And you can't even imagine how impressed he was when I told him that you're the mother of my two sons. Well, I normally have no reservations in receiving compliments. But... I feel like your boss's praises are a little bit out of place. What? Why do you say that? There's nothing wrong with what my boss said in my opinion. Well, you should get ready by now because dinner is about to begin. I can't leave my boss waiting for too long. But, honey, can I pass on this one? I'm not really in the mood to join you and your boss for dinner. Because honestly... I don't think he's a courteous and well-mannered man. Besides, I've already cooked our meal. It would be a waste of time if we just throw the food away, right? Honey, didn't I make it very clear since the beginning how important this opportunity is to me? I mean, can you just one time set aside your selfishness and think about the sake of our family? What are you saying, honey? If anyone were to be called selfish, that person is definitely not going to be me. I sacrificed my youth and my high-paying job just so that I can recede into the background and keep an eye on our family. I can say with certainty that I always do my best to benefit us and improve our standard of living. Hence, I literally have no shame and no regrets about what I did and what I'm doing. Okay, okay. I don't have time for your meaningless preach. Get dressed. Do your makeup properly and make sure that you will be present at Osteria's Francescana restaurant with the best look you can put on. Sweetheart, I can't help but feel like there's something shady about your boss's intentions towards me. Especially based on what you just told me earlier. That's why I refuse to go out and have dinner with you and your boss. Can you just respect my decision, Oliver? Gosh, how many times do I have to remind you? I need and I demand you to join us for dinner because it's vital to my position at work. And I think it's about time that you use your beauty for a good purpose other than flirting with the neighbors all the time. What? I can't believe you just made that up out of the blue. I didn't and have never flirted with the neighbors. Take back your nonsense accusations and say sorry to me at least. Don't be so confident and think that I don't have a clue about you fooling around my back and cheating on me with other guys. Do you think I'm an idiot or do you think I'm blind? Honey, you're testing my patience. I said it and I'm going to say it again. I'm not cheating on you, Oliver. The only thing I do is take care of our family. That's all. Fine, fine. Whatever you say. Consider yourself lucky that I didn't put a GPS tracker on your phone. If I did, you wouldn't even be here and raise your voice with me like that. How could you come up with such a twisted idea? You know that I just linger around our house. 
taking care of the chores, handling our kids, and making sure you have everything you need to accomplish your duties at work. That's the point. Meeting up and having dinner with my boss is the easiest and most efficient way you can be of help to me. This way, I will fulfill my duties at work. Anyways, you're my wife and you're living in my house. So please, at least obey my commands and don't question me. But, honey, I'm not feeling well. Quit fooling around and act up on me. You can't just say that you don't feel well all of a sudden to avoid responsibility. That's it. I'm not going to waste my time arguing back and forth with you. Remember to show up at 7 o'clock at Osteria Francescana restaurant. If I don't see you there, prepare to pack your bags and get out of my house once and for all. You're being unreasonable. You know that? Fine. I'll do what you told me to, but I'm not happy about it. Oliver, I don't want to see Lucas again, so can you please not make me do it? Why, honey? We discussed this a million times. You need to please my boss and make him happy so that he can favor me at work. But this is not right. I mean, he constantly steps out of line and tries to hit on me. You have to see his suggestive messages. They are disgusting, to say the least. Come on, darling. Don't make it seem like a big deal. He's just trying to get to know you better. That's all. No, it's not only that. He even went for the physical touch whenever you weren't paying attention and then pretended like everything was just an accident. This is unbearable and unacceptable, Oliver. You can blame me all you want, but I'm done being harassed by your boss. I'm a married woman and I have high respect for myself. Being harassed? I think you're just over-exaggerating things a little bit, aren't you? I mean, if my boss were to do all sorts of things to you, as you said, just consider it as a token of gratitude for the kindness and generosity that he granted us. Look at all the jewelries, luxurious clothes, and expensive perfumes that you're possessing now. Where do you think they came from? They didn't just fall from heaven. But I didn't choose to receive them. It's you who made me receive all of the gifts that your boss gave me so that you can sell them for money. You're not thinking straight, Carla. What in the world do I need money for? It's so that I can take care of you and our kids. It's for our family, you know? Look at the brand new and elegant car that I've just bought for us. Now your parents won't have any reasons to look down on me anymore. What are you talking about? My parents never look down on you. They love and care about you like their own biological son. Well, they never said it out loud, but it doesn't mean that they don't think it to themselves. Look, ever since you agreed to go out with my boss, my career has taken gigantic steps ahead, which I couldn't do in almost five years. Don't you see? Money is starting to flow non-stop in our pockets. And from the way I see it, you should be grateful other than complaining. But are you really willing to trade my self-worth along with our marriage? Just for the sake of money and your work advancement? I'm really disappointed in you, Oliver. No, you're misunderstanding my intention, honey. Look, just bear with me for a little bit longer. Then we'll have enough money to stand our own feet and start anew. Do you... do you really mean it? Of course I do. Have I ever lied to you? Just today, Lucas promised me a pay raise of $3,000. That's double what I'm making. Can you believe it? And you have to see the lock on Benjamin's face. He thinks outperforming me at work will help him get a better salary. No way in hell. In this life we're living, it's all about the tools we have in our hands and how to make the best use of them. So, I'm just nearly a tool to you? No. Pfft. A tool? What are you saying? Oh wait, did I say that? Well, just forget it, honey. It must have slipped my tongue. 
Anyways, let's just play along and make my boss happy for a little while longer, okay? We have almost reached the end of our poor and lowly existence. I think you have to thank me when we get to the other side and truly live our happily ever after lives. Well, then, I guess, we do as you say. That's my girl. I always knew that I could trust in you. You don't know how much your decision is gonna help to boost our financial situation in the future. Carla, are you there? Carla! Yes, I am. Is there something else your boss wants from me? I don't think I can keep up with Lucas's mind games anymore. He just can't stop harassing me with his suggestive messages and disgusting pictures. He's even resorted to violent means if I don't obey and do what he wants me to do. You can still clearly see the bruises on my face and the red marks on my neck. Relax, honey. That's what men always do. They show their possession over their women. What? Have you lost your mind, Oliver? I'm not Lucas's woman. And can you believe that he's just texted me and asked me to become his wife? That's insane and loathsome. How can he come up with such an idea when he knows very damn well that I'm a married woman? Well, about that, actually, I kind of promised him that you and him are going to get married soon enough. It was under the force of the circumstances, sweetheart. I literally had no other options. I mean, he threatened to give me the sack if I didn't do as he told me to do. What should I do? Why do you need to be so afraid of him? You already signed the labor contract, right? He can't just kick you out of the company because of some dumb reason like me not approving of getting hitched to him. That's contrary to the law of employment. But honey, I'm not very productive at work lately either. I kinda committed some errors which caused the company to lose a couple of thousand dollars. He can definitely rely on that reason to kick me out of the company at any minute. But luckily, he made up his mind and decided that we can do it the easy way. What way do you think is the easy way? Me getting married to him? You're really sick, Oliver. I'm not sure I can even call you my husband anymore. Are you really just gonna leave me dying like this, Carla? Please do something. You know, Lucas told me that he would give me $350,000 if I could persuade you to become his wife. That's why I even promised my mom that I'll buy her a new house after you accept Lucas's offer. My mom was so excited that she boasted about it with our relatives and every one of her friends. What should I say to her now? I can't just back down on my words. People will consider me nothing but a cheap-ass liar. What? So you just automatically assumed that I would say yes to become your boss's wife? Without even asking for my approval firsthand? And more importantly, your mom also knows about my situation and she's cool with it? Well, I mean, no one could ever say not to that massive sum of money, right? You should really assume a more rational point of view once in a while. Moreover, my mom agreed to what I said because she knows that I have a plan. What plan? You know something? Believe it or not, I'm done playing your games. Do whatever you please to save your butt from being fired. I really don't care anymore. Your ignorance and cluelessness are really out of this world, Oliver. No way you're not going to turn your back on me like this. We're in this together, do you remember? We're so close to achieving what we always dreamed of, which is to have a substantial amount of money and have an easy life. I know you'd be lying if you tell me you're not into that idea. No, not at all. Not a single bit. You can have all the money you want, because I'm leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? Don't you have any consciousness about how critical my situation is? Listen to me, Carla. Just stick with me this one last time, okay? Then we'll lay our hands on everything we've ever wanted. Don't you want to give our beloved sons Noah and Elijah a better and worth living life than what they're having now? Of course I do. Making way for our sons' brighter future has always been my biggest wish since we got married. 
It's true that I would do anything to make our sons happy and have a more comfortable life. But marrying your boss while we're still husband and wife? I don't know about that, Oliver. It's against society's morals and values, you know? I'm well aware about that. And luckily, I have prepared the divorce documents for us in advance. You should be able to see it in the drawer of the bedside table. I already signed my part of the papers. What? So you've already planned it out? Clearly, my opinion doesn't mean anything at all. Darling, I have thought it all through. And I know for a fact that you marrying my boss is the best way for us to resolve the situation and set one foot on our path to never-ending happiness and wealth. I don't know, Oliver. It's really odd and unethical. Look, all you have to do is pretend to be his wife for a couple of months, right? And then we'll execute an impeccable plan where you'd be collecting evidence proving each and every one of Lucas's lies and dirty work at the company. I mean, he can't keep his hands clean and still be that rich, right? All you have to do is steal or take pictures of some documents that he leaves in his house. I'm sure we'll be able to find valuable information to start a lawsuit against Lucas. Fine then. I guess there's no better option. Carla, where are you hiding? Why can't I see you? The wedding is about to start and Lucas is running out of patience. You'd better show up right this minute. Why should I be? I can't stop smiling to myself now that I'm able to get rid of you and your dreadful boss. What? What are you saying? Didn't we agree on our plan? You get married to Lucas, gather some evidence to expose his wrongdoings and send him to jail. And then we can get back together and be husband and wife again. Do you really think such an impractical and half-baked plan would ever work out? I'd be a complete idiot if I ever put my trust in whatever you have to say. But in the end, I have to thank you. Because your ideas inspired me to come up with a plan of my own. What plan, you crazy wretched? How do you even have the guts to fool me like this? Well, it's nothing major, really. I just happened to, you know, secretly hide a small tape recorder in your coat pocket. That's why I knew about your intention of forcing me to get married to your boss way before you told me. What? So you already knew about it and you played dumb? Well, yeah. Why should I reveal my plan to you anyway? And, by the way... I also posted on social media each and every one of Lucas's harassing messages along with the evidence displaying his act of violence towards me. And how can I forget about the taped dialogue between you and your boss? I mean, it would make an intention-grabbing and shocking title for any newspaper article. A man who tried to sell his wife to his boss for $350,000. <laughs> Don't you dare outsmart me. You're just nothing but an ignorant housewife. Call me stupid or ignorant or whatever. It doesn't change the fact that you're about to face the worst nightmare of your life. So prepare yourself. As for me, I'm just here enjoying all the money, expensive jewelry, and clothes that your boss gave me. What? Where did you get all that money from? I thought you always let me keep the money that my boss rewarded you with. Well, well. Are you still naive enough to think that I would hand you all the money? After all, it's never wrong to have a backup plan, you know. Oh, no. Now my relatives and co-workers are attacking my Facebook wall and flooding it with insults and hateful words. What should I do? Can you just tell them it's nothing but a little misunderstanding between us? We can make it work again between you and I. And why should I ever do that? It's a mess of your own creation. And you should be the one who cleans up after it, not me. All I did was demand justice for myself. And think about it. Have you ever defended me from your toxic boss? Please, Carla. So long, Oliver. After the recording of the conversation between Oliver and Lucas was posted on the internet, 
it immediately became sensational news. Lucas's reputation was severely damaged as he was the CEO of a large and trusted real estate company. His company also took a big hit and tumbled not long after that. Eventually, Lewis had to face an enormous debt and went bankrupt. Well, I guess that's the price one has to take for being a complete jack wagon, right? As for Oliver, he was shunned by his coworkers, his own family, and everyone he knew. He had trouble finding a job because his scandal was so popular that no company or organization wanted to take him in. And the most hilarious part of it all is that his mother wouldn't stop complaining about not being given any new house that he promised earlier. And me? I'm glad to say that me and my two beloved sons are still doing just fine. The money I gained from Lucas was more than enough for me to embark on a new and joyful life. I've moved back to live with my parents, and my boys are overly happy to be able to spend time with their grandparents again. Not only that, I also got to open a business of my own and began to rebuild my career from scratch. Well, it's not a big business, but it makes me proud now that I can myself provide for my kids without having to rely on Oliver's paycheck.